okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about something which is absolutely fundamental to your study of relative velocity. And this is the concept of velocity versus speed. And it's something I would have introduced, for example, the concept of velocity and acceleration in the past. However, because we we're only introducing them, I wasn't 100% rigorous in my, first of all, definitions and so on. And the reason for that is that it's easier to understand a new concept even only partially if you're if you're relating it to a concept you, you already knew. So for example, if I said to you that acceleration was the rate of change of speed with respect to time, you, that might be slightly easier to grasp than saying it's the rate of change of velocity with respect to time because you don't really, you mightn't at the time understand what velocity is. So I know, I'm now going to show you exactly and be very, we'll say, rigorous in, in, in the, de the, we'll say, the, uh, the dealing of velocity because it's absolutely vital in relative velocity. However, it wasn't so much so in the other chapters that we did. So the first thing we need to define is what a, what a vector is. And in the past I said that we have two things. We have scalars and vectors. And a scalar is a number. All right? So it's like a, you know, 5 or 6 or 7 or negative 1. Actually, no, it can't be negative 1. That has a direction. So it's a positive number, we'll say. And in that, it, it cannot it cannot tell you a direction because it's just a number. It is a magnitude. That's what a scalar is, it's just a magnitude. However, a vector is both a scalar and a direction. So, through a vector you can tell the magnitude of something and which way it's going. So you might have something like negative 5. Now that is a vector because it is a magnitude of 5 and going in the negative direction. Now the negative direction in regard to what? It, it doesn't matter at the moment. It could be anything but it has, it would say, a direction on it as well. And, uh, yeah, okay, so that, that's all I've got to say about that so far. Now, where did this, why did this actually matter? Well, it matters because I said that, just to, would say, define these things rigorously, I said the following. Velocity. Velocity, and I'm telling you this, this is the truth. This is, we'll say, this is correct 100%. Is, and I'm going to use a different biro. The rate of change of displacement with respect to time. Now in the past I would have said that velocity is the rate of change of distance with respect to time. However, distance is a scalar and it has no direction involved in it. Whereas uh, velocity and displacement must be, they must uh, be vectors. They must have a, a direction associated with them. So this might, you might say this is only trivial and this doesn't matter. Well it doesn't if you understand the concept. However, it does absolutely matter. If you only partially understand the concept, then this is vital. And I'll show you why in a moment. And secondly, acceleration. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. And in the past I would have said it is the rate of change of speed with respect to time because I wanted you to get the general gist of it. It's the rate of change of how fast you're going with respect to time. However, because I say velocity your direction all your direction also matters. So and I'll show you I'll show you I'll show you why. So let's say for example I draw a Cartesian plane. So it's X and Y axis. So there's my Y and there's my X. And the, the X Y axis make my X Y plane also called your Cartesian plane. Now of course we've dealt with this before because of the way I'm defining plus here this is plus plus minus plus minus minus plus minus. So here x and y are plus, here x is negative and y is plus, both are negative, and here plus is, uh, or excuse me, x is plus and y is negative. <coughs> Alright, now, <coughs> excuse me, if I'm dealing with a velocity time diagram, so I'm going to call this v, or oh, excuse me, this velocity time diagram, what you say first goes on the y-axis, velocity, time. And I won't put in the units because that doesn't matter for the moment. Now, 
the slope, as I've said before, of a velocity time diagram gives you your acceleration. So this is by, this is, we'll say, the, these are two points, T1 and T2 at V1 and V2. The slope of this line is e the slope equals the acceleration. All right, the slope equals the acceleration. Now, time we know always goes in is, is always positive, and because of the direction of this slope, it's going upwards. We're going to have a positive slope, and we're going to have a positive acceleration. Now, just as an aside, just to remind you, the formula for slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, that's very important. And you could also say it's equal to delta y over delta x, and if you're doing differentials, it'll be dy dx, if you're doing a bit of a differentiation. All right, so that's a positive acceleration because that would be a positive slope. However, what if it was going this way? That, of course, would be a negative acceleration. All right, a negative acceleration. Now, of course, if I'm in the, this quadrant here, where I've defined now plus velocity and minus velocity, well, what does that mean? If it's if because plus is defined as upwards, it just means that going in direction uh, in this direction is we're going to call it plus v. So if you're going in, we'll say the positive y direction, you say plus v. However, how do you say if you're going in the negative y direction, you'll say negative v. So down here is all negative v. And it doesn't mean that you have a negative velocity. It means, well, the magnitude of your negative v will still be positive. It'll still be a, uh, it'll still be a velocity. However, it just means it's going in the opposite direction. All right, so that's all that means. So what happens uh, up here? So if we have a negative acceleration where we have positive velocity, what will that do? Well, of course, it'll slow it down. It'll slow down your, your particle. However, what happens if you have a negative acceleration where you have negative velocity. Well, it'll speed it up, because look what's happening here. Your acceleration is going this way, which is in, the, is in the increasing negative v, if that makes any sense. So this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So it's getting larger in the minus direction. So all that means, it's getting, we'll say, if you just say this is the right, and this is the left, or up and down, of course. If you're going up, uh, it's plus 1, plus 2, plus, two, plus, plus 4. And if you're going down, it'll be plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, but in the downwards direction. And how we say that is say negative, negative, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So, of course, a negative acceleration is an acceleration in the minus direction and a deceleration in the plus direction. And similarly, the, uh, a plus acceleration, and I'll draw it here, a plus acceleration, a slope like this, is a an acceleration in the plus velocity direction but it's a deceleration in the negative velocity direction because look if here is v1 and here is v2 well v1 is in magnitude greater so say v1 I'll draw this in a different bio this is really killing me so v1 is equal to negative 3 v2 is equal to We'll say negative 1. The magnitude of v1 is equal to 3. The magnitude of v2 is equal to 1. So if you're going from 3 meters per second to 2 to 1 meters per second, you of course are decelerating. Alright? So that's what's happening here. We're decelerating in the negative direction. However, once we cross the x-axis, we're starting to accelerate in the positive direction. So it would be like if you can imagine yourself on a road and you're going in, well, on just say a straight road like a motorway where you cannot go any place else but straight and if, I, if you're going uh, a positive, you have a positive speed uh, or positive velocity, excuse me and I apply to you a negative acceleration what that will do is it will slow you down, it will slow you we'll say from 20 meters per second to 10 to 5 to 0 until you stop however if the acceleration is still applied you will start speeding up in the opposite, excuse me, in the opposite direction. All right. So a positive acceleration gives you uh, gives you speeding up in the positive velocity direction, but speeding down or deceleration in the negative 
V direction. All right. So it's very important. Your signs are absolutely uh, vital when you're dealing with velocities and accelerations and also displacements, which is, we'll say, your, your distance vector. So for that reason, speed is not the same as velocity. Speed is just a number. It is a scalar. So and velocity is a scalar with a direction involved in it. All right. So the last thing uh, that I can think of that I want to say is is the following. If I have a velocity vector, and I'm going to call it 4i plus 3j. Now, what does that mean? I'm just going to just actually I'll rub out this just so I can I can make a clearer diagram. 4i plus 3j. Now I'm going to define my unit vectors in the normal way. It doesn't really matter which way you define them, but I'm going to define them like so. So 4i plus 3j means we're in the plus plus quadrant up here. So it's, we'll say this is 4i and maybe this is 3j. And here, that's your vector there. All right, that's your velocity vector. So the question is, well, how much of it is in the x? And you'll say, well, there's four units of velocity in the. Sorry, there is three. There are three units of velocity in the y and four units of velocity in the x. But that is no good to you really because if you want to work out how fast you're going, like you want to work out how fast you're going, so you're going to have to work out the angle. So you'll say, we'll say this is alpha. You're going to say I'm moving at a certain speed at alpha degrees. So what's the speed here? How fast am I actually going? You need to get the magnitude. So the magnitude of your velocity vector, the magnitude of your velocity vector is equal to your speed. That's how you get back your scalar because it incorporates both of your uh, axes. So in this case, and of course it's just Pythagoras because you'd say the magnitude is going to be your hypotenuse and this will have three on your opposite and you're going to have four on your adjacent. So in this case, you're going to say that the magnitude of v to be squared, uh, magnitude of v is not, that's a, uh, well that is incorrect, just to write this mathematically correct, it should be that way. I will show you why. So the magnitude of v squared will be equal to 4 squared plus 3 squared. The directions no longer matter. So the magnitude of v to be squared is equal to 16 plus 9 is equal to 25. So the actual velocity, or excuse me, the speed of your vector is equal to root 25 is equal to 5 meters per second. So what that means is the overall effect of having 4 units in the i, positive i, and 3 units in the positive j, is that you're moving at 5 meters per second at whatever angle alpha. And of course you can get that by using tangent. So the point is that if you're, you're being asked, like, well, after how long Will they will two particles be a kilometer apart? You'll get their uh, you'll get their v or the velocity of a relative to b, and then you'll have to use the magnitude of that vector to work out how how uh, how long it's going to take because it's the speed you need in order to get the time. Okay, obviously, if you just wanted to get the time in a certain dimension like j or i, well, then you would just use the the vector, of course. Okay, a three or four or whatever it is. So I think I've um, I think I've said all I've got to say in that. If if you have any questions or if there's anything that I haven't really I haven't really uh, done properly, please tell me and uh, I'll deal with that. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.